Hey folks, uh, this is Ravi Kiran Gopalan. I'm co-founder and CTO at Ira Technologies and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how uh, AI is being used in the RAN and how Ira looks at the application of AI uh, within the RAN. So we really think of it as three layers. There's the first layer, which is just standard good software. Then there's one layer above that, which could be called traditional AI. Uh, and we have seen scenarios like channel estimation and prediction and scenarios like predicting KPIs for, um, uh, for various performance metrics uh, to use in our energy savings algorithms. We have found good use for standard traditional AI because um, it, it really optimizes and, and uh, hyper-localizes to various network scenarios, user scenarios, and it's able to uh, come up with the right algorithm for prediction of these KPIs. Uh, but the newest topic, the third layer, is generative AI and how we think about applying generative AI to, to, uh, to the RAM space. Within that, we are further uh, thinking about it as three distinct modalities. One is just a pure human-computer interface. Generative AI is very good at understanding the intent of the user and mapping it to internal representations. Similarly, on the way back, it's able to summarize actions that are being taken by traditional AI models and uh, give that information back to the user in, in a well-understood manner. The second modality is taking the intent of the user and mapping it as hyperparameters to then call traditional AI models. Right? What's unique about generative AI is that it's perfectly used for scenarios which are not pre-built or pre-envisioned. A user might come in and uh, on day one might want to do something and on day two might want to do something else. So uh, that mapping of the user intent to further into specific hyperparameters, which can then be used as input to, to call uh, standard AI models, um, we use generative AI as, as a second modality for that. The third modality is really taking user intent and directly mapping it to code. We use a lot of that uh, as code gen um, for our app builder module where a user comes in, has a particular automation in mind, has a particular um, kind of network op optimization routine in mind. And instead of having to spend months writing that out in, in relation, uh, working with a team, they can come in directly either using a flowchart or using uh, just language, describe what is it that they want to achieve and Gen AI can map it to code gen and map it to our apps. So these are the three things and we completely envision more things being added uh, because as, as new requests come in, as new functional requests are coming in from, from the user, we can al already see various ways Gen AI can work in conjunction with traditional models to solve those problems. So what's next? Um, we, we foresee or what we foresee is that Gen AI is going to become more mature and it's going to start getting used in production networks uh, that will allow operators to not just uh, go from uh, one fire to the other or only deal with the highest of priority issues but uh, we really feel like Gen AI tools are going to allow operators to truly optimize their networks and truly make sure that not just the highest and uh, uh, the highest of the uh, tickets are being taken care of but truly uh, even medium level or low level tickets are being taken care of and, and the entire network is, is working seamlessly at the highest level of uh, efficiency. Mm -hmm.